Welcome to the today's coffee lecture powered by the ETH Library. My name is Madeleine Fritschi and I work at the e-publishing office of the ETH Library. The topic of this coffee lecture will be about research data during the peer review process. What are the possibilities in the research collection? Um, the coffee lecture will be recorded and the recording will be provided afterwards on the website of the ETH library. Yeah, but for now, um, in the next 10 minutes, we will see various use cases involving the research collection and understand its possibilities and limitations of, um, of it when it comes um, with publishing research data during the peer review process. Here, you can see the table of content, what we will look into. To introduce the topic, um, we briefly analyze these statements from the publishers regarding their data access requirements during the peer review process. Um, these three publishers require that the data is made available as early as possible, um, but as you can see, but not necessarily already published. Um, the data can be placed under an embargo during the peer review. Yeah, um, however, um, um, I have to tell you um, that it's important to note that these requirements may vary depending on the journal, uh, but also on the publisher that you plan to publish with. In the past few months, um, we have therefore identified three possible use cases. Um, that are ones um, that the publisher requires that the um, research data must be published before peer review. Then the second, that the research data um, must be deposited in a fair repository, but the data access is not required during the peer review. And last but not least, that the research data should be deposited in a fair repository and that the initial access is only for peer review so that the reviewers can already access the data. So how can we handle these three scenarios in the research collection? Let's take a look um, at the first use case. Um, this use case um, says that the publisher requires that the data is already published before peer review. You can do this as usual in the research collection by creating and publishing a new research data entry. Um, please note that once the data is published, the data cannot be replaced anymore due to our terms of use. Um, instead, uh, you can use um, the option to publish a new version um, of your data so that it will be displayed also in the research collection. Um, yeah, for the next use case, um, the research data should be already in a fair repository deposited. But um, the actual publication of the data is not mandatory, nor is access to the data during peer review. To handle this situation, we recommend choosing the option um, reserve a DOI and selecting the DOI preview checkbox while creating a new entry in the research collection. Here you can see how the checkbook checkbox looks like. Afterwards, you can either send the reserved DOI as evidence of your data storage location to the publisher and then upload later the data after peer review um, by using the upload full text data function. Alternatively, as alternative number two, um, you can, of course, upload the research data when you are creating the entry and impose an embargo so that the data is not yet publicly accessible. The, you decide the length of the embargo and you can also, of course, adjust it as needed. 
once the associated publication is published, you can adjust the access rights by modifying the corresponding metadata field with the suggest edit function. Yeah, and now let's move on to the last use case where the data should be already in a fair repository and the reviewers should, ha should have access to the data during the peer review. Our recommendation is um, differs um, depending whether the peer review is conducted as a non-anonymized or a single double blind review. In a non-anonymized peer review, the authors may be aware of the reviewer's identities. In this case, we recommend creating a new entry in the research collection and choose an embargoed access or closed access so that you can provide the DOI to the publisher. The reviewers then can ask um, access and um, can place a request access and this um, request will be forwarded to you um, for a approval. And after the peer review, we adjust the access rights accordingly. As an alternative to this process, you can also make your research data available for peer review through Polybox or a similar platform and create a new entry so you can provide the DUI to the publisher. For the single or the double blind peer review, um, when you have research data under 50 gigabytes or up to 50 gigabytes, we recommend also sharing the data through Polybox or similar, um, and then create a new entry in the research collection so you can send the DOI to the publisher. Um, please be aware that um, the ETH affiliation is of course um, indicated in the DOI. And here you can um, uh, also do your upload of the peer review in the research collection. Sometimes um, the publisher requires that the data should be in the FAIR repository beforehand. Then in this case, um, please use another repository. Unfortunately, generating a shared link specifically only for peer review of research data on the 50 gigabytes is not possible in the research collection. But if you have research data more than 50 gigabytes, you can use the LibDrive service. Um, for that, you create a new entry in the research collection and also um, reserve yourself a DOI. Um, then um, to upload the data, you should um, click on the Upload Large Data Volume checkbox um, under the tab Upload here shown um, quickly. We will um, create a folder for you where you then can upload your data. Please email us um, as well so that we can create a share link on LibDrive for you that you can send for peer review. Also, please um, be aware again um, that the ETH affiliation will be um, indicated in the DOI as well as in the shared link of the um, LibDrive service. Once the peer review is here also complete, please inform us so that we can finalize the LibDrive entry. Yeah, and with that, we already have now reached the end of this coffee lecture with this last use case. Each of these use cases are documented in our manual research collection. And with that, I already thank you for your attention. And I would like to remind you of the next coffee lecture on the topic reading NZZ, New York Times and other new newspapers without paywall. It will be held at the same time and same place next week.